Not everything is going to be valuable to your team. Not everything announced at an event is going to be production ready or even available. And there's always going to be another event coming down the pipe if you miss out on something. You know, don't get to try out shiny new library X for the next two months. Well, there'll probably be an event in three months where you'll get another chance to learn about it. So it's always kind of an ongoing cycle. And while that can be frustrating at times, I I think we have to make peace with that and recognize that we're not going to be able to learn and catch up on everything. Hey devs, and welcome back to another episode of the Goobar Podcast, where we talk about building great software and helping others to do the same. I'm happy to be back with another episode of the podcast this week. I've had to take a few weeks off to finish up some projects and to prep for a couple more projects that are coming down the pipe. Um, But I'm back and going to have a few more smaller episodes batched up this month. This week, I want to chat a bit about how to digest a big developer event like Google I.O. With I.O. having just occurred and WWDC right around the corner, I think there's a lot of devs and teams out there going through this exercise at the moment. And I thought it might be helpful to chat about some of the things that I found helpful over the years and that hopefully you can implement for yourself to help you better digest a big conference or meetup. Now, before we jump into today's episode, I just wanted to point out a few small announcements for the podcast and for Goobar as a whole. So first up, I have a brand new website at goobar.dev. Now, if you follow me on uh, other platforms, you might have seen me talking about this a little bit, but I don't think I've mentioned it here on the podcast yet, so just calling it out again. Uh, This was exciting for me to have a a new updated uh, website. It's a place for for blog posts, for reaching out for other sort of business inquiries, and eventually, fingers crossed, by the end of this year, it'll also be a place for courses, both free and paid. So if you're interested in that, you can check out the website again at goobar.dev and you can sign up for notifications around future courses and blog posts and stuff. Now, along with the new website, then comes a new domain. So I also have a new podcast contact email. So now if you have a question about the podcast or a topic suggestion, feel free to reach out at podcast at goobar.dev. Again, that's podcast at goobar.dev. And then the last thing, and maybe the the most exciting thing, depending on your situation, is that uh, I now have some openings for more direct one-on-one coaching for developers. This is something I've been doing a little bit of uh, so far this year, and I think it's been going quite well. And it's an opportunity for you and I to work uh, much more directly in a one-on-one setting, have a a weekly call or or bi-weekly call if you want, and chat about whatever you're working on. Uh, We can cover things like career readiness, specific projects, learning plans. It's really an opportunity to go much deeper into sort of your needs and your questions and more much deeper just into a kind of a mentorship and coaching relationship then it can go just in in dms and such on social media or via email so this is something that i'm really excited about going to be opening this up to just a few people to start so if you're interested maybe you have a a big job interview coming up maybe you are looking to uh, make a switch and get a new job and want to work on your portfolio or something or maybe you're just trying to get into the mobile space as a whole and are looking for some uh, more one-on-one guidance i would be happy to chat with you check out the new website again goobar.dev coaching to learn more and to reach out to me and see if maybe we want to work together okay with all of those announcements out of the way Let's go ahead and move on to today's episode. So 
how do we digest a big developer event like Google I.O. or Apple's WWDC or Android Summit or any of the many conferences out there or really even a meetup? There's a lot of uh, events out there these days. We're constantly being barraged with new information. So I think it's good sometimes to just take a step back and think about how we approach these events. And I often like to think of these from two viewpoints as well, both kind of a, a personal development standpoint and in from a professional standpoint, from maybe the standpoint of whatever team you're currently working in. Now, so from both of these standpoints, after a big event like a Google I.O., there's a few things that I think work really well for helping digest the event, for helping take in all the information, uh, parse through it, figure out what's going to be helpful, and use that to, in an actionable way to improve your projects, to improve your team, etc. So the first thing that I think that we all ought to do is to find the recordings of the event. So Google I.O., for example, most of their events were on demand, so they were available on YouTube pretty much right as the event was going on. Other conferences these days might have the events come out a week later, a couple weeks later, but generally recordings from any type of event these days do become publicly available, at least for the most part. Now, once you find these recordings, take a look through the list of videos. You know, write down the ones that you are most interested in. Maybe write down the ones that you think are most relevant to your current project or your current team. And create kind of a ranking of these to help you guide what you want to review. And now it's really important when you're making this list to be realistic about your time. If you create a list of videos you want to watch that just includes the entire video catalog, that's probably not very practical. You're probably not going to have time to review all of that. So try to be pragmatic in this. Cut down the ones that aren't that relevant and try and have a smaller focused set of videos to review. Now, one of the best things about being able to watch the videos on demand after an event is that we can watch sessions at 1.5 or 2x or 1.25 or, or 3x speed to help condense time. This can really help us fit more sort of watching, more watch hours into a smaller amount of time. And the great thing is, is that if we do miss something, we can pause it, rewind it, rewatch, uh, repeat that process multiple times if we need to. We can pause the video to copy down some notes or a code snippet. So we don't really lose much by speeding it up, but we can actually gain a lot by fitting more information into less time. And if we are in a team especially, it's often hard to carve out time to watch these events. I'll talk more about that in a bit, but this is a good way to help combat that. Now, as you're watching these sessions, I think it's a really good idea to take notes on them. And I think it's good to take notes at a high level. You know, taking a note of the high level ideas or the big announcements, maybe jotting down a specific API call that looks particularly interesting. Note down the things that really stick out, but don't try to recreate the whole slide deck. You know, you have the link to the video, you can find the links to external documentation, additional resources. So you don't need to capture the entire essence of a session in your notes. You just want to be able to know what was in there and to pull out the most important bits so you can come back to it when you need it. With this in mind, I think it's a really good idea for the end of your notes on a session to include some kind of a takeaways section. This can help you connect anything you just saw to other things you may have been thinking of at the time. If you're in a team, these takeaways are often a good place to think of how the content is relevant to your current project or to highlight things that you might need to discuss with other people on your team, maybe your, your product manager or your design team. Now, I want to talk a little bit about some maybe more specific items, depending on your coming to an event from a personal perspective or more of a professional one. So if you're watching, let's say, Google I.O., just personally, you're just interested, but you're maybe not currently working in a team or your team maybe isn't that interested in investing in Google I.O. and you're doing it on your personal time. In that case, I think that if you have the extra time to dedicate, 
it's oftentimes a really good idea to check out some of the sessions that sound interesting to you, even if you don't have a use for them. You know, if you're crunched for time, it's often a, a common thing for us to focus only on the things most useful, but sometimes that can bog us down. Sometimes that doesn't give us the same sense of excitement that maybe we're looking for an event like a Google I.O. So if you can afford some time, I do think it can be energizing to check out some of the sessions that aren't quite as relevant, but really just sound fun and interesting to you. And now this last one is maybe the most important takeaway from this whole thing. But remember, you can't review everything from an event. I say these kinds of things all the time. You can't learn it all. You can't know it all. Well, when you're reviewing sessions from a conference, you usually can't review it all either. So cut yourself some slack if you're not caught up on Google I.O. yet. Cut yourself some slack if you aren't up to date with all of the keynotes and all of the Q&A sessions and you're maybe missing some of the details from discussions people are seeing online. That's okay. Everyone has different amounts of time and there's nothing wrong with sort of catching up more slowly or not catching up at all. Now, from a more professional lens again, uh, this is more so if you are in a team, I think it's really good to finish up your notes, finish up watching your sessions, and then kind of go back through those notes again and just kind of highlight the things most relevant to your team. And the things most relevant might actually depend on who you are. So you might actually even make a couple different lists. You might make a short list of items to highlight for your design team. And maybe a set of things for your product team. Maybe there's some big announcements to, let's say, Google Play or, or your distribution model or around permissions and security, things that are going to be required for your roadmap. Uh, and then you might highlight things for your dev team, different tools, different libraries, different approaches you might consider. You know, these uh, events often have something for everyone, so you're probably going to want to tailor your takeaways for those groups as well. Now, one caveat to this would be maybe you're specifically focused on just developer stuff. Maybe you've been tasked with watching and reviewing an event for the developers. In that sense, focus on just the development things. But if you're sort of the, the liaison for the entire event for your uh, engineering team or, or your company as a whole, then it's probably a good idea to try and tailor your takeaways and notes for people. Now, as you're making all these lists, it's important to highlight the items of value. So maybe there's an important tool that came out that looks particularly helpful. Maybe there is a particular new feature that might bring a lot of value to your users. Highlight those things and bring them up to the appropriate people. And similarly, you really wanna highlight items of risk. A good example of this for the Android space might be Google Play's new app signing requirements, that new apps have to be signed uh, by Google and using app bundles coming later this year. This is something that's really good to be aware of if you're getting ready to launch a new product this year. So any kind of uh, risky things you hear, uh, announcements, changes to permissions and security and such, again, highlight those and bring them up to the appropriate people on your team. Now, how do you disseminate all of this information? How do you share what you've learned and what you've condensed with your, your team, your organization? Uh, well, there's a number of ways you could do this. You could put it all into a document, share it out, and just hope that people review it and get the context from it. You could blast a message on Slack if your team's on there, um, or you could schedule some type of a lunch and learn session where you invite everybody in to a, a video call and you maybe review your notes and takeaways and try and facilitate some discussion with sort of a larger audience that might be interested in it. Now you can even do this in multiple sessions if you want. You could actually review all of the videos as a group with developers on your team or, or designers or your entire mobile team as a whole. Or you might review after the fact with smaller groups. You might have a sit down specifically with your design team to talk about the newest updates to, let's say, material design and material you. And you might have a different meeting specifically with your product team to talk about some of the security changes coming down the pipe. And if you really wanted to be efficient, you might consider splitting up your development team and having different groups of people watch and review different sessions and then bring back all of those learnings and share as a group. 
That could be a good way to sort of maximize the value from the event without having to have everybody watch every session. All right, so now just a few closing thoughts regardless of why you're watching an event, whether it's personally, whether it's professionally, whether you just happen to stumble across it and didn't turn it off. The excitement generated by a conference, especially like an event like a Google I.O. or a WWDC, uh, that, that excitement is really valuable, especially in a remote world where we're not getting as much connection, it can just be nice to sort of get together and kind of connect virtually with people from all over the globe. And that excitement can be really helpful towards driving innovation and helping move things forward on your development team. Um, So it's really helpful to try and dedicate time to invest in the event and try and capture that excitement to help drive innovation, to help uh, crack down on bugs, to help facilitate tech investment and product investment on your team. There's really a lot of value in trying to harness all of that. And now lastly, keep everything in perspective. So again, not everything is going to be valuable to your team. Not everything announced at an event is going to be production ready or even available. And there's always going to be another event coming down the pipe if you miss out on something. You know, don't get to try out shiny new library X for the next two months. Well, there'll probably be an event in three months where you'll get another chance to learn about it. So it's always kind of an ongoing cycle. And while that can be frustrating at times, I I think we have to make peace with that and recognize that we're not going to be able to learn and catch up on everything. Um, So if we can use some of the tips Throughout this, to kind of guide and focus our efforts, uh, I think we can try and find a nice balance between staying up to date and not becoming overwhelmed with all the information that's out there. Alrighty, I'm going to wrap this episode up. If you are trying to catch up on Google I.O. or you're getting ready for WWDC or you're looking towards some of the many other developer events coming down the pipe this year, uh, I hope that some of these tips will be helpful to you whether you are watching them personally or whether you are trying to watch them to help your team uh, stay up to date on all the latest and greatest. And with that, we'll go ahead and wrap this episode up there. As always, thank you so much for watching devs and I will catch you all in the next episode.